Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. His book is out today. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Paul. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me. How's everything? It's great, man. It's I ain't seen you in years, Rich. Long time. Last time we was together, we went to we had like a little brunch. We had a brunch. This was like damn. That was like that was a while. That was like that was over ten years ago. Twenty eleven, yeah. Twenty eleven, yeah. twenty twelve. Look at you now, yeah. Rich. It's great, man. Absolutely. Great, yeah. First of all, I want to tell you, man, I love your book, Lucky Me. Thank like, you. Like I read it thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. But I need to know the process of this book because I know the publishers probably wanted more like your agent life now. Uh, you know what is what is your relationship with LeBron? But you didn't nah. give him that. Nah. You gave him all. East Side of Cleveland, very detailed, and I mm -hmm. appreciated that. But how did you get the publishers to agree with that? Well, this wasn't the publisher's idea. Okay. The book was my idea, uh, along with my team. And, you know, it's a timing thing. So it was like, you know, would you ever do a book? I'm like, yeah, if I do a book, though, I don't want it to be a puff piece mm -hmm. because I think it's important for people to, there's people inspiring to be you or be in your position and they see the successes, right? They see courtside at games, mm -hmm. the, the, the negotiated deals and all that. And so people say, well, you know, I can be Rich Paul. You got these companies looking for the next young black guy with a cool jacket on to, mm -hmm. to be their representation of mm -hmm. a Rich Paul. But I'm like, no, y'all missing a lot. If you want to be me today, let's start here. Mm -hmm. Let me Absolutely. educate you on some of the things that I know it resonate with you. I know it resonates with you, mm -hmm. you, um, and everybody. And so I just didn't want to write a puff piece. I wanted it to be something that was impactful, educational. You know, because experiences are education. You know, mm -hmm. people look at it. And what I didn't realize, and I realize even more today, you know, when you're going through shit as a kid, like you read about my mom, you read about you know just them dark days. Mm -hmm. It's like the world is coming to an end, right? You think like, oh, everything is crumbling. But then in the position I sit in today, I'm like, oh shit, like those are like superpowers for me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? Because now in these boardrooms, you know, I'm on the board of Live Nation, I'm on the board of UTA, I'm on the board of the LACMA, you know, coming from this place, this kid. And so it's weird how it, it shaped me and gave me just this unbelievable molding, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? And so I think as we were writing the book, I wanted to make sure that it was not exactly what you what you was because that's what people would think. Mm -hmm. as, and when and when they hear the title, they immediately go to, "Oh, he met LeBron in the airport. That's why he's lucky." Yeah. And I'm really being extremely sarcastic to those simple-minded thinkers like mm -hmm. that. You know, I well, took some shot. I guess I took a little page out of Charlemagne's book mm -hmm. with the sarcasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But but it's interesting when you say that because when you read the book, it's still. Luck, because I was always the person that never believed in luck. I'm still trying to, yeah, like grasp the concept of yeah. luck. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, so to be in the position that you're in right now, do you think it was luck, hard work, or hustle? Well, I want I want to start from the game because somebody listening might not know who Rich Paul is, right? They oh, might okay. they might not know who Rich Paul is. So yeah, I don't want to take that for granted, right? For sure. Now, yeah. so super agent, you you. Uh, I want to say manage the careers of a lot of uh, athletes, not just in basketball and football and, and other sports yeah. as well. And you started from Ohio, but you didn't start with uh, with this on your mind. No. So let's break down where you came from in Ohio and how you started, because your story is 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 crazy. Just talking about your pops, where you came from, yeah. and what put you into this place. So let's start from there. So my, uh grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, like you said, on the east side of Cleveland. It's an area called Glenville. It's mm -hmm. Glenville. and. 125 in Edmonton. 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's a street called St. Clair, which is basically our Broadway, right? And mm -hmm. it and every 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 street off of St. Clair is essentially its own block. And it's the neighborhood, but it's but it's also separate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was we grew up you couldn't really go to certain corner stores if you wasn't from you could, but you couldn't like and a weird thing is I could go anywhere in the city, but a friend of mine maybe not. They they might not accept him mm -hmm. like that or whatever. So right. I always had this this support system, right, and a protection as well. I, you know, I think just based upon a lot of shit that I did as, a, as growing up. Um, but an athlete, you know, someone who I didn't really horseplay as a kid because I, I was always 
about betting and getting some money some mm-hmm. type of way. Love fashion, but I was into sports. I played sports, but I wasn't the best at it. I wasn't like, growing up on my street, I was the best. But as I grew, I wasn't the best player on my high school team. Mm-hmm. But it didn't really, it didn't, it didn't uh, deter me from wanting to play. And we won a state championship, you know, two years in a row. I went to state championship three years straight in mm-hmm. high school. Um, but I wasn't good. I wasn't the best player on the team by by far. In but, the book, you talk like you was getting buckets now. Well, if, it depends on what age I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still one of the best shooters out there, period. Okay. I mean, you could talk to some NBA guys about this, they'll tell you that. But what I'm saying is, but I was the best off the court in certain things, mm-hmm. right? I love to get dressed, get fly. Mm-hmm. I had this confidence in any room. And I hung with older people. See, mm-hmm. people don't understand. I was 13, like, hanging with y'all. Mm-hmm. So I'm 13 years old, 14 years old. I was 13 old. hanging with y'all old niggas. <laughs> 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 now I'm saying today, the right, age right, right, today. Right. But and so when I was a, when I was young, I remember I had got, I lived with both grandmothers. So mm-hmm. my mom was struggling and we had to move in with my mother's mom in 86, 87. And then in 1990, I moved to St. Louis for a small stint because my mother's from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Went to Vashon High School. I got a ton of family in St. Louis. That wasn't working for me, my brother and my sister. So my dad put us on the Greyhound back to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. When we moved there for a short stint, we just stayed in a small apartment, just us. And you know, like that's when you read in the book where I, I used to have to walk around and look on the ground and pick up a quarter or a nickel or a dime and buy me a cheeseburger or whatever. And I start betting guys at the park without having any money to get, my, and my jump shot got better because of that. But anyway, so then I moved in with my father's mom mm-hmm. and it was her my her mother and my uncle charlie the average age in the house is 65 yeah, yeah, yeah. right i'm 10 mm-hmm. so i'm watching meet the press and larry king live in 60 minutes and mm-hmm. ironically i'm on 60 minutes last night last which night, is yeah. which is insane mm-hmm. so it was just i was that kid that mm-hmm. kid you see on the cover of the book that's 13 14 years old I, I chose that because that's where there's a fork in the road in life. We all know that, right? At that age, you start being held accountable for your actions in the neighborhood. You start mm-hmm. to, and you see guys you hung with every day, and now y'all start to go y'all separate ways based upon your interests. Right. So my interest was fashion, getting money, girls, you know, and 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 sports. That was those are my 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 four pillars. And so it took me down this path, but I grew up in my dad's store. And on that corner- R and R and J R and J confectioner, yeah. yeah. You know, on that corner, man, I was never allowed to be a kid. You saw things, you heard things that you probably shouldn't have seen as a kid. Of course. And you start to mimic things, you start to do things. And so I aspire to be like certain guys on and off the court, right? And so I know you love real estate, mm-hmm. Envy. I never forget, I got my first apartment. And my man that I went to lunch with, he's like, uh, his name is Tex. Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, how long are you going to stay in the, in the apartment? I'm like, what do you mean? I just got it. He's like, yeah, but you should be thinking about buying a house. Owning some. You know? I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I'm 19 years old. Like, what are you talking about? So he, but he showed me when you go in the house, okay. This is counter your your money's in your kitchen and bathrooms, and he sh- you know so when I bought my first home at 20 years old, the first thing I did was I redid the kitchen and bathrooms. Bathroom, you know, so I had this, I was young, but I also had this older type soul. of yeah. soul to me, and so all those stories are are in the book, but that's who I am, and so that picture lets me know that story. All that picture lets me know everything you said in that book was true. Hundred percent. Because you ain't getting that hair and bone. That's in front of my dad's store, by That's the what I'm way. Saying. You ain't getting yeah. them Tommy Hilfiger drawers. Nah, like <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. And you know, and and by then, by that time, by this age, Christmas gifts. Like, if I got something for Christmas, it's because I bought it. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like I never spent a. I, I can't remember a Christmas I ever spent with my mother. You know, prior to being grown. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was Ms. different. Miss Peach, yeah, holidays. She was a G, by the way. You would loved her. You eat sweet potato pie? Hell yeah. Banana pudding. Oh, she would, she, 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 yeah. 
you would fly to Cleveland for 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 that for her, you know, <laughs> or have her ship it to you. It was that good, Word. but it it was just a thing where, like you saying, that picture was taken by a lady. Her name was Picture Lady, mm -hmm. and Picture Lady would go around to the different blocks, and she had a Polaroid camera with film, and she would charge us five dollars for the picture, and so. That was just having to be one of me. I may mean, have some dudes in there. And you know, back in the day, you would give that picture to a girl you like mm -hmm. or whatnot. And I was thinking about Picture Lady the other day, and she was somebody's mother, and obviously she was strung out as well. But think if she wasn't, mm. right? Mm. She was actually Instagram mm. before Instagram, Yeah. right? Because she, what she was doing was, she was allowing us to, to tell our story through this through this picture of what we were doing at that time in the moment. I know exactly when that was. When was that? You remember the exact day and everything? Well, I know exactly the moment that okay. was because I had said to her, hold on, let me take my shirt off. Mm -hmm. And you know, the one knee on the, like everything in that mm -hmm. picture was detailed strategically like that because in my mind, I'm giving that to a girl. So I wanted gotcha. you know, the whole look to be what it was. She was documenting. Yeah, she mm -hmm. was documenting. So, when I talk about the street aspect of it, I'm not glorifying it, but what I'm saying is, when you young, especially young and black, just a minority in these, in these poverty-stricken mm -hmm. communities, you don't grow up next to people with careers, mm -hmm. right? You don't, you don't understand how corporate America actually works. And so if you have any type of entrepreneurial spirit, your options are so small, right? Mm -hmm. And then, the opportunity is even smaller. There are no opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so you 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 know, you turn to certain things. And when you think about that, people, when you talk about how to get to this point, I can't ask you, you know, you talk about lucky me. Part of that is I am lucky to grow up in the community. I am lucky to have a dad who had a st I learned math working my working dad's register. cash register and mm -hmm. playing people's lottery numbers. And you know, if your auntie been playing a number, Six six five for a whole year, That's right. and now she get to the thing, and this kid playing, and and she get home, and six six five come out, but her ticket say six six four. That's right. Oh, she gonna whoop your ass. Right. Oh, you right. either better have the money that she missed out on, or it's gonna be some smoke in the city, you That's know. Right. And so, that that was the pressure for me. There's no <clears> pressure <throat> in what I'm doing today because of look at the journey I've walked. I was just trying to survive the day. You know, you come outside, you're just trying to get home that night. So we couldn't plan ahead. There was no, in the summertime, we going to Europe for two weeks and travel. No, you know, we, we barely went downtown. I went with my dad on the bus, but I got friends that's never been to the airport. You also talk about, you know, your mom being strung out, but when your father passed away, you actually started selling drugs, the same drugs yeah. that strung her out. Yeah. So I respected my mom and my dad. I never wanted any part of that um but as you know like and I, I respected my dad so much and not to mention my dad was like air traffic control for the hood and that's the one thing like he didn't he was he was a man of principle and moral and my dad was a man's man like he was literally you know he's a man's man mm -hmm. and I respected him so much but when he passed away it wasn't just that my dad passed away my brother was locked up my uncle was locked up my cousin John John was locked up, and my mother and sister are in St. Louis. And so I'm really on an island, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I made that decision, I made the decision with the understanding that I'll, I'll, I also know what comes with this. And so if you're gonna do it, I had to make a conscious decision to, to try to find the right within the wrong. And I was just trying to survive. I'm not glorifying it because I think there's, you you have so much talent, I think there's, People settle a lot, right? But back then, like I said, the options and the opportunity were so slim. Mm -hmm. And the things that I aspired to have and that I wanted, the only way to get it was to do, and I I was a hustler, period, in all, every step of the way. I'm still hustling to this mm -hmm. day. Um, as you see, I came in and, and gave you guys- The clutch. You know, the clutch, yep. Clutch, yep, yep, yep. clutch athletics, <clears throat> New Balance, um, and that's a sports apparel band I'm building, but yeah, man, like I didn't, I don't glorify it, but it was something that at that moment in my life, 
I had to do, or at least I felt I had I, I to do. I don't judge anybody for what they were doing while they was in survival mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know it's just mean? what I felt I had to do. And, and, and again, but there was a conscience to it. There was a, there was a strategy to it. There was a um, less is more mm -hmm. component to it as well. And you knew what you were doing was wrong because when you lost that 250, you kind oh. of felt like you shouldn't have been doing that anyway. That's anyway, that money, so right? I didn't even, but I didn't even trip about. I just kept, I just kept, kept going because mm -hmm. you know it, it wasn't for me, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes I've never sat in my success even to this day and. I don't see you guys much, but if you ever see me, I'm gonna be the same person every mm -hmm. time, right? Mm -hmm. One thing about one thing about life growing up the way I did, it don't lie to you. Mm -hmm. It don't lie to you. So, and I grew up around people that, you know, you couldn't talk about it if you didn't live it. Mm -hmm. That's just how it was. We we wasn't taking rental cars and putting rims on and driving a freak Nick and acting like this was my car. Mm -hmm. You know, we we would never ever do that. So today in the chapter on your clothes, like those same principles stick to me. There's just certain things I'm not gonna do. So as I'm representing players, I'm not gonna ever lie to you about anything or for no amount of money. Mm -hmm. But the title agent, you know, that was always deemed as a shady thing. I made it glamorous, mm -hmm. right? Being seen, being out, being on the floor, dressing fly, all that. That's just who I am. That's not because I'm an agent. But then what I realized was I'm saying to myself, as I worked at another company and I'm looking at these guys representing players, I'm saying to myself, this is all transaction. This is why, thinking about the streets in the book, what the streets does is, it for most people, it's gonna allow you to build bad habits, mm. right? Mm -hmm. You mm. get up late, you have nobody to answer to, mm -hmm. you have no no structure, no scheduling, know anything pretty much right and every time you do something in a transaction form it feels like you've made money yeah you've made money but you haven't made profit it's a different dynamic but it makes you feel as if you did mm -hmm. but it's setting you back right and so that's why people never tend to build anything and so I took that and I learned from that and I said you know what these people, it's only about a transaction. When a talent run out, they're not investing in the person at all. Mm -hmm. They're 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 treating the person as if they're, you know, pretty much dumb. Mm -hmm. And the families, once they take the money, they took the money, mm -hmm. and that's how it was, and that's how it still is in a lot of ways. And there's still a piece of families, especially, and I and I I target this towards black families there's still a piece of black families that would rather do business with them than you for a number of things. And this is what I learned at my dad's store. When I worked at that, my dad's store, we used to give people credit, brown paper bag, mm -hmm. they come in, Miss Johnson needs some toilet paper, some soap, you would write it down. That's in the middle of the month. Mm -hmm. First of the month come around, everybody get their checks. Mm -hmm. And me and my brother catch you spending the money with the competition around the corner. That's right. Who probably white or and, Asian? Or, yeah, mm -hmm. and you Anything still, but, black. but you still. Oh, why you just don't come and pay us? Mm -hmm. And it started to seep in my mind that oh, when they see me with the new Jordans on, in their mind, they got it. They're spending money with my dad, and that's helping him make me look better than them. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the same thing today. So, you know, you you'll rather spend it with, or you'll rather pay them but when it come to me you want me to cut my fees how, how difficult was that when you are doing these deals with with the nba nfl or whatever whatever organization it is because to them like you said yeah they might not respect you as somebody else who's who doesn't look like that that looks more like them than like you how difficult it is to get in there and say nah I, it's still my worth it's still my value and for people that don't know i just want to break down uh you you started you met LeBron in, in the, the airport, airport yeah. and back in Ken Airport. Y'all connected on things outside of just sports. You're connected on fashion and familyhood and this that yeah. and the other. And you decided you wanted to be an agent, but you didn't go to hey, school that, for no, sports management, right? A little step. Yeah, because he put you on payroll. Well, I don't give too so, much of the book away, but right, 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 here's right. what happened. So we, I was already going back and forth to Atlanta because it actually has started here. I came up on an all women's bus trip. 
what my man's mom was throwing. And I actually, you know how you go over to your man's house and she's in there frying chicken or whatever. I gave her, she was like, we're doing a bus trip for the girls or whatever. I'm like, okay, great. I said, here, here go, you know, three, four hundred dollars. Take four people, how much is it? It's like just $65 a piece, whatever. Like, yeah, go ahead, no problem. Man, I'm in the gambling house. It's about 2 33 in the morning. My phone rang one night and they like, um, she's like, where y'all at? I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, we we waiting on you guys. They park at a local grocery store and everybody parked their car. And you go up and back. I wasn't gonna go. My man who was with me, his name Mike E. My man who was with me, he's like, yo, we might as well go, bro. Cause we had just bought these scooters that go like 125 miles an hour. And and in order for us to to ride them without a helmet, you can have a helmet on or eyewear. So, you know, we wanted to fly eyewear. We wanted Cardis, mm -hmm. you know. Back then, this is this is in 2000. Right. 2001, pretty much. Um, and so we come here and take the bus trip. Well, they get off on Canal Street. Well, I, I definitely ain't shopping there. Mm -hmm. So him and I, we <laughs> hit, you know, we hit Fifth Avenue and mm -hmm. we hit all the store because we was fly. Like we would, this is what we was doing, mm -hmm. right? And so out the corner of my eye, when the, NBA store was on, I think it's 53rd and 5th. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I gotta go here because I got these Bo Jacksons on ice. I had these Bo mm -hmm. Jacksons on ice for like six months. And we used to buy sneakers, I'm not exaggerating, literally every day, mm -hmm. right? And so I wanted the Latrell Sprewell, the white one, because the number eight was outlined in black and I had the black Bo Jacksons. Mm -hmm. I wanted that to hit like that. And so, I go in there. So you had the orange and blue Bo Jackson, not the black no, no, and white. I had the, I know, black, the Bo Jackson. Oh, black Bo Jackson. See, okay. most people would put the white jersey with the white orange. But I didn't want that. By the okay. way, he says that in the book. Mm -hmm. Like you literally say, that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how I know you paid attention to that much detail. You like everybody would do the orange and black yeah, Bo Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you just assume because he in New York, he go to the Knicks, he get the boom. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah, but I already had the Bo Jackson. I just I wanted the spree well because of that outline. Got eight. you in the so black. Yep. It could have been envy on the back, but mm -hmm. I just wanted that that, eight that black, black yep. eight. And so while I'm in there, I'm in line. And I, I don't even know this young man's name, but this is crazy. When I'm in the, the store and I'm in line, I look and it's an Oscar Robertson Bucks, it's an Elgin Baylor Lakers, and it's a, a Bill Russell Celtics. I get to Elgin Baylor and I get to Oscar Robertson. But prior to that, I asked him, I said, what is that section right there? He's, this is very important. He said, that's our hardwood, hardwood classic classics right. section. So I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me go. I grab two jerseys. I'm thinking they, you know, $100 or whatever. 300 My shit go up to $750. i am like, but I'm in line. I'm not going to get out of line. And I'm like, you know, forget it. Come on with it. Boom. So now when I get home, we go back. I get home. I wear one jersey. It was, a, it was this neighborhood called Superior Hill. And they throw a block party, right? So I, I knew I wanted to wear the Bucks with some butter, some Tim's, because that orange and green, I mean that green and red will hit with the Tim's, with mm -hmm. the butters. I didn't want to wear no red and white shoe mm -hmm. or whatever. And then, so I wore that, and everybody asked me about the, but I was fly, so they always would ask me about the, I was wearing Versace in like 94, like mm -hmm. tight, mm -hmm. when nobody was wearing it. Charlemagne would have been would have got on me. Mm -hmm. But I got pictures of this, you know, mm -hmm. and I was always a kid that would, if I had $1,000, I spent 800 on a sweater. It didn't matter to me. So anyway, so I I do that and I wear the Elgin Baylor Lakers. When I wear this jersey to the club called the Millennium, everybody's asking me. And the Millennium is every hood from everywhere is in here. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, I get home, first house I ever bought, and I had a little makeshift um, office. And I couldn't sleep. Maybe I couldn't sleep, man. I'm like, damn, this is on my mind. Because everybody kept asking me, and I remember the kids said, that's our hardwood classic section. Section, So I'm already getting in, it's about 4.30 in the morning. You know, you can't really doze off my energy up. So I go into the, and I get on the computer. And it was still like, might have been like, it wasn't, definitely wasn't Google, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, what search engine, maybe AOL or whatever, but I put in hardwood classics and distant replays came up. It was a store in Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing that popped up. So now I can't wait, it opened at nine. Called. I buy three jerseys. I do this, I repeat this for two months. I get close with the guy, his name was Andy Hyman. Mm -hmm. I get close with him, I say, Andy, I'm hustling. I say, Andy, do you, uh, would you mind if I, you know, in, you allow me to invest in your store? He said, Rich, if you serious, come and see me, fly down. 
I had never been on the plane because you know we live in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. We drive everywhere. Mm -hmm. Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, everything is close. Philly, DC. So my man D. Hodge, he graduated from a school called Cleveland Heights. Mm -hmm. And when you graduate from Cleveland Heights as a as a man, most of these kids, especially the black kids, they went to HBCUs. So they either went to Clark or Morehouse. He was like, my man went to Clark. His name was Gerald. He lived in Marietta. He's like, my man went to Clark. Man, we can go to his spot. He'll let he'll let us stay with him. I'll book the flights. Well, if anybody know D. Hodge, he's kind of like, he's not cheap, but he's cheap, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of he going to spend the money wisely. So he found the flight on AirTran from Akron, Canton. That's what got me flying out of Akron, out of Akron Canton. Because if I would have booked the flight, I would have probably just took Delta out of Cleveland because mm -hmm. it's a 15 minute ride to the airport versus a 45 minute ride. Because the way I think, the time I'm spending is money. Mm -hmm. But he didn't think that way. Thank God he mm -hmm. didn't. Mm -hmm. And so now I get down there, I sleep on Gerald's couch. Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping on Gerald's couch. They get up, take me to, I get there 11.30, my meeting's at 12. I get there 11.30 because I'm tired. You're giving too much of the book away, man. Am I? Yes. A little bit. Okay, I'm just getting this story. I'm just getting this story. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but, but they should go and read. They still got to read. But so, when I have the meeting, Andy tells me, I can't let you invest, but if you work in the store, I'll allow you to get 40% off whatever you buy. But you know, I'm trying to, I'm like, come on with it. And that's what really started me going back and forth. So through that, those travels, I actually met LeBron in the airport one day. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Yeah. But it was interesting because Bron, you see, y'all y'all kicked it, became friends just on life, right? Yeah. Life, yeah. Then he put you on salary. You didn't even know why. No, he called me down to his house one day, man. And and by the way, I wasn't even looking at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. But but as we got cooler and cooler, he put me, you know, and I'm and I'm showing him little stuff. I've been buying diamonds and stuff since so I was seventh, eighth grade. So I'm showing him about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, we really bonded over our mothers though. Mm -hmm. And I'm the last one to, I'm not from, I don't play the fake cousin thing. I'm from Cleveland. They're from Akron. We wasn't friends. It wasn't fake anything. It, it just, it was a fake thing. It mm -hmm. really was. And um, yeah, he called me down to his house one day. He asked me for my social security. And I'm like, man, no way I'm gonna give you my social. You know, you can't play with nobody's mm -hmm. social. Mm -hmm. But after about 45 minutes, 45 minutes, I ended up giving it to him. And we had been, to camps, Jordan camp, Nike camp, all these different camps. And so, yeah, man, like a, about a month or so later, my a check come in the mail. And my mother, I didn't, when I said I didn't know how to read a check, it's just because if you never got a check before, pretty much outside of a summer job at mm -hmm. the post office, I didn't wasn't reading a check in terms mm -hmm. of understanding pay period, whatever, no title or anything like that. And my mother was like, yeah, you, you know, you're making... 48,000 pretty much a year, 2,000 a month, whatever it was. And I'm like, cool, but nobody's called me and told me anything. So I called him, I was like, yo, what am I supposed to be doing? Like, what's my job? He was like, I don't have nothing for you, bro. Like, I, don't, I don't got nothing. He was like, I just, he told me, he's like, ever since you've been around me, it's been nothing but love. Like, I, I, don't, I don't feel threatened. You damn sure ain't no leech or anything like that. And I will figure, I just gotta have you around me. Cause like, cause you know, like his situations, in which I remember one time he didn't, he might not have wanted to sign an autograph for a kid or something. And I had a conversation with him like, you should sign an autograph because you just never know. Not knowing that he was going to play, you know, 30 years in the league. Mm -hmm. But back then I'm saying, you don't know how long, you mm -hmm. know, somebody's going to want your autograph. And you also don't know what it does to this kid. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I said to him, I said, God chooses people for a reason. And you know, you got to play the cards that's dealt. The cards that's dealt to you just so happen to come with an abundance of pictures being taken and autographs being signed. And this was prior to him being drafted, by the way. Mm. I believe that all the wisdom your father instilled in you, and that's that's another reason I love the book because of the way you honor your father in the book. I believe a lot of the wisdom he instilled in you, you were able to instill in Braun. 100%. You know, and he probably and others, needed yeah. that father figure 100%, at, that, at yeah. that moment. And yeah. it was, and you know, it was four of us, but I brought, we all brought something different to the table. I brought that element, like you're saying, mm -hmm. just that cold heart, truth, street, you know, um, a protection in a lot of ways he felt, and a confidence for all of us though. Like, you know, I would do, you know, I had Corms and Jacobs and Rolexes and 
if it here, man, not him because his wrist was too big, but like I, I was a guy, I wanted everybody to look like something, mm -hmm. right? And so that mentality I got from my hood, like if it was your turn, Envy, to go and buy the Jordans, you bought them for all 10 of us. Mm -hmm. Damn. You know, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. And if it was my turn or if I or somebody had to go and, or, and buy this, like they get them for, it wasn't nothing like that, right? Even when we bought the scooters, I didn't have the money on me. My man Mike E had it. I'm like, he lived closer. I'm like, just give me a, just give me ten. And I'll give it to you when you, when we get back down the way. He's mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. You know, that's mm -hmm. how that's how our relationship. And I'm still friends to this day with pretty much all the guys I grew up with. I can't hang out with them because I'm in a different space. But when I go home, I don't I don't really have no new friends. These mm -hmm. are you know my friends. Why was it important for you to honor and celebrate your father the way you did in Lucky Me? He was just such a great example for me. And, and growing up, most of my friends didn't have a father. Mm -hmm. And even though my father didn't live in the house with me, he was just such a great example. And not for me, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody respected my dad. Man, when my dad's funeral, you had 2,000 people, 2, people there from the age of 3 to 93. Wow. Everybody came and paid their respects. And i never forget, a man came in my dad's store one day after he passed. And he was like, Big Rich here? And... Uh, we was like, nah, man, you know, he, he died. This grown man, he had to be about 57 years old. Man, you would have felt like he got hit by a, a, a it was just, it, it hit him hard. He couldn't believe it. Cause my dad helped people grow. My dad helped people. He raised a lot of these people mm -hmm. and, and men and women, like girls, if they got pregnant and didn't know how to tell they, they parents, they come to my dad. Mm. Guys went to the jail. The payphone in my dad's store, when you call, a lot of guys that went to jail, they would call and my dad would actually bond them out. Mm. So, you know, and in a lot of ways, that actually saved my life in a lot of ways because I had so much protection from the foundation that my dad, mm. my uncle, my brother mm. laid down. So when I'm in them back alleys and I'm gambling behind an abandoned building or in the basement of an abandoned house, for me to make it out of there with the money of this guy that I know, I know what he do. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, and that's the thing about the business I'm in. I don't come from a place to where you can have anonymous mm -hmm. people go on hoops hype and talk bad about Rich Paul. Like, I don't give a shit about any of that, but I'm a stand on business. Mm -hmm. And so I also don't play that aspect of it. And when I had the conversation on Gil's pod with Stephen A. Smith, Remember when I said, that's Cap. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to be negative towards him. I'm saying it's Cap because I come from an environment where I survived that energy for somebody to tell me, get the, you know. Oh, you're talking about when Stephen A. Smith walked up on you? Or said, no, when he, this, said, when he said he told me to get the fuck out of his face. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. like, you never said that to me. Not because I'm this tough guy, because I'm for, I'm for peace, prophet but I'm a stand on what I believe in. Mm -hmm. It's because where I come from, that energy is every day. And if I can survive, navigate my way throughout that and get to this point, mm -hmm. I'm, at, I'm in Disney World right now. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in terms of the energy and the aura and just everyday life trying mm -hmm. to make it out. My energy is not going to push you to say that to me. Nobody, mm -hmm. and that was that was my thing. Not because it's this tough thing. No, it's I. I never. My aura doesn't exude that, and so that's what. But it's because of how I grew up. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Gil's podcast, why you disrespect Michael Jordan like that on the podcast? I didn't disrespect yes, Michael you Jordan. Did. You said that he's. You said Braun is platinum and Michael is gold. gold. Yeah. Like God damn. Really? I said for me the the antlers. whatever you call them the antlers. He said the antlers. Only, I think he said yeah, yeah for me because again okay. If, the way I'm looking at it is you never respected Michael Jordan too. You said that in the book. I did not say. You didn't I say. <laughs> I did not say that. Tell you put words in your mouth. Okay, see, that's, 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 okay, that's, that's, right. So, but you're not said, gonna do that. Charlotte. You said you, you said you respected him on the court, but off the court he wasn't for the culture. Basically, is what you said. No, I said I respected him on the court, of course, but I, there was no touch. Points. There was no coach. My Michael yeah, yeah. Jordan was a different guy off the court. Yeah. You know, I had several examples of Michael Jordan off the court. Right, so that that's not a slight to me. I love Michael Jordan. I, by, by the way, every shoe until like after fourteen, because it started getting a little weird. Every 
game. I used to watch the commercials. It wouldn't even ch- I was a Michael Jordan I understood fan. everything. Everything you yeah. said about Jordan in the book, I understood exactly what you meant. Yeah, but that's my thing. So like Iverson was more culturally Iverson, relevant to us. Yeah, yeah. And, but but okay. So when you think about a guy like Allen Iverson, imagine if Allen Iverson had a Rich Paul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a different dynamic because I understand him. I understand culture, and I know what those braids. And what that arm sleeve did, and Tattoos, I understand you know, yeah. the business that 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 didn't necessarily go with Reebok. Mm-hmm. Who would you have took him with back then? Nike. Did Nike understand it? Because he was there. It's not like I'm sure Nike offered him something. Allen Iverson knew what his agent told him. Mm. You can spin it however which way you want to spin it, mm-hmm. and if you don't know culture, you don't know the shoe. How, how many how many pairs of sneakers you think his agent bought Allen Iversons? Oh, I don't know, but I know I bought a bunch of them. Answers. But uh, I'm yeah. just saying, prior to Allen Iverson, yeah, how many yeah. pairs of sneakers you think his agent probably bought? Reebok? Oh, no, his period? agent. Oh yeah, probably none. Mm-mm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So how could you how could you do a shoe deal for me and you don't you don't have no because gotcha. you're gonna get very few guys that can actually move product. Mm-hmm. Everybody have a signature shoe cannot move product. Mm-hmm. So that shit just for your ego. Mm-hmm. When you have a signature shoe, the goal is to build a signature business. There's been very few guys that can build a signature business. That's real. Okay? That's real. So my thing is you can't help me make that decision. It's, now, you can help 99.9% of the players make a decision on a shoe deal because it's just pretty simple. If you don't care about the brand pretty much, most guys going to want to wear who's paying the most money because mm-hmm. it's, it's only going to work while I'm playing. But if you're an Allen Iverson, that ain't what you need. You need somebody that understands culture, mm-hmm. understands cool, understands product. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you have the opportunity to build a business that can have sustainability in the marketplace mm-hmm. much longer than you play. He still eats off the answers though, don't he? Because it's something his, his agent did. Or somebody took some money away from no, him or something like that? His, they deferred based upon his spending habits. So gotcha. they deferred his money, which was great. I'm mm-hmm. not knocking that. But you also could have got the money right now and diversified his portfolio to where he couldn't touch it and let that money compound. And then he when he made it, back, yeah. he's paying up. You know, when, then now he he's paying capital gains instead of paying an income tax, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm not knocking it. I'm just I'm just saying... For him, it was the right thing in terms of, oh, he he likes to do this, so we're going to do this so he doesn't mess it up for, mm-hmm. for his family or whatever the case may be, which you have to appreciate that. But there's also a side to where you can educate him mm-hmm. on what you're doing and put that money in a di- – you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because if I'm not getting it to 52, then look at – I'm what was he, 32? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. T- 20 years of that money not working for me. Mm-hmm. Is that necessarily the right thing too? Like I don't know. I'm not again. I'm not knocking. I'm just saying the way I think versus, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. You got it anyway. Let's, no, go, back I, to, I, let's go back to the platinum antlers thing though. No. Okay. <laughs> so all I'm saying is that's just for me. I think people people oftentimes want you to think how they think for whatever reason. Obviously, we know MJ's a goat of his era. No, he's the goat of his era. He's the goat, Rich. It's okay. Of listen, you can't compare eras, man. Like because you can't fault MJ for the era he played in. You can't fault LeBron for the era he played in. Mm-hmm. You can't fault Steph Curry for changing. It. Steph Curry changed the game of basketball and the way it's played. My coach Frank Novak, or Coach J, may he rest in peace, the Glenville legendary coach. If you stepped across half court and shot. A forty foot jumper. You'd be on the bench. The only guy I know did that was Damon Stringer, mm-hmm. Cleveland Heights guard. Capaletti let him do that, but he actually made him. That's a bad shot. Steph Curry turned a bad shot into a great shot for Steph Curry. That's right. Not for everybody. <laughs> That's right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We can knock those things. And again, when you talk about the the Jordan Lebron, mm-hmm. everybody gonna have their own opinion. You're entitled. To, you're entitled to that. Michael Jordan was the best guy I ever seen play the game of basketball until 
20 years of LeBron, me seeing 20 years of LeBron. That's not a knock. Because LeBron, LeBron could also play with Mike. But I think LeBron would have been just as good in Mike's era. Do you think people will ever fully appreciate Braun no. if we keep comparing him to Michael no. Jordan? That's my thing. And but it's but it's because people LeBron was the first person that did things how he wanted to do it. Right? Unapologetic unapologetically. Mm -hmm. They wanted you to do everything like Mike. Well, I don't have to do that. Right? And it's not, that shouldn't be a knock on me. Mm -hmm. Good right? marketing, though. Be like Mike. Everybody yeah. wanted to be like Mike. Yeah, but, you know, everybody wanted to be like Mike. That was a great, that was a great, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but when you, about, yeah. <laughs> but when you think about. himself from saying something. But when you think about that. That shot hurt you that bad, man, when he beat Cleveland in the playoffs? <laughs> no, no, no. I was actually, no. No, I was actually a Mike fan. I was actually a Mike. I'm still a Mike fan. I, I talk to Mike all the time. Wait, wait, like, wait, it's wait. not a, that's not a thing. Do y'all argue about who's better, him or Ron? Me and Mike never had. We argue. We we have. We go in debates about different things. I got the utmost respect for Mike. We go in mm -hmm. debates about different things. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a truth. Like I don't sugarcoat things, and I, I'm never gonna get in a room, and it could be Jay Z in here and Mike in here, and and then here comes Charlemagne, and I act like I don't know you, or I start talking different. I'm not gonna get to New York and start talking like I'm from New York. I don't. Mm -hmm. We don't mm -hmm. play that where I'm from. So it don't matter who it is on the other end. If I believe something, that's what I believe. It's not a slight to anybody. Mm -hmm. I think Mike's the GOAT. I also think LeBron's the GOAT. I agree with that. I think the antlers are a little different for different reasons. That has nothing to do with the game of basketball, though. It's, it's well, See, well. that's the problem with the Bron uh, Jordan thing, because it always turns into what what type of man they are off the court. No, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not looking at that either because okay. I can't. I can't judge Mike for a type of man. Mike's a great, great man. Mm -hmm. Take care of his family, kids, everything. So who's your top five? Great business. Ball players all time. My top five all time. All time. You know, people be trying to front on Isaiah Thomas from a point guard perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, eh, they need Goat. to stop that. Go mm -hmm. stop, because Zeke. Very few guys touching Zeke. Mm -hmm. So from a point guard perspective. There's Zeke, mm -hmm. there's Magic, mm -hmm. there's Steph, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would, I, would, I would even throw, even though he hasn't won a championship yet, as a point guard, you know, you got to respect what, what CP has done, too. Absolutely. You know. Um, you didn't say five point guard. You just said five oh, yeah. players. Yeah. Oh, he said oh. five players. Yeah, but it's, it's it's tough. But my top five of all time: mm -hmm. Bron, Mike. I mean, I got to put Steph in there now because Steph. you got Steph at three. Not in no particular. I'm doing positions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Man, see that's where it get tough. I got because, Mike because I got to put. I gotta put Kobe in there too, of man. Of course. Why don't you, why you yeah. gotta think about that? No, no, I'm just saying I gotta put Kobe in there. That's four. You got one more. That's four. And then oh, shit. You go Magic, you go Shaq, you go. Nah, because I already got my point guard. And I rock with Magic, but I, I mean, you know, I would go Shaq. Shaq. Yeah, I would probably go Shaq. But it's you know, it's the whole top five. I don't do top five. You know, if I would that's my team that nobody can beat. That's my team. Mm -hmm. But then when you talk about just great players, Kevin Durant's a great player. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Despite what anybody has to say. The league is full of great players right now. Giannis is a great player. Mm -hmm. You know, um Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. You you know, like people try to get on a guy like A D, but there's no better basketball player when you talk about Anthony Davis when he's playing the game of basketball at his healthy. level. He's mm -hmm. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But our league is in a but these young guys today, you look at what Jason Tatum, I mean, all these, and I have, the guys that I represent, the young guys that I represent, we got dogs, man. Garland, Maxie, John, DeJounte, Trey, you know, Miles Bridges is back. You got, fuck, you got, um, I mean, we got so many. Zach Levine, De'Aaron Fox. You're really the best agent in the world. 
Because relax, you re- relax, <laughs> relax, relax, Charlotte. No, man. you really yeah, are. I'm just because you rep your players so hard. As he should. Yeah, I have I don't, I've never but seen that should, before. Though. Maybe yeah. the, what's the dude named Drew Rosenhaus? Maybe a little bit, but not but like as he you. Should. Nah, yeah, nah. I, because you gotta understand, like, I'm appreciative of, of of my guys. You're only as strong as the guys allow you to be. Mm-hmm. My guys, they and and it's I'm not just representing them as basketball players. They're young men. They're people. We talk about everything. Draymond. Draymond is at my house more than me. I don't even have to be there. Draymond can be at my house right now. That's my favorite player in the league. That's Draymond? my dog. Just, mm-hmm. I just, and it's not because yeah, Dr- I just like the way he 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 leads on the court. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I and I I like to show, you know, the young guys coming up, mm-hmm. right? Like I said, you know, this year our draft was was great. Not because we had every pick one through ten. No, it's not about that. Because if you do the numbers, there's only sixty picks. A lot of guys don't make it to the second deals, but the character of guys is what I really focus on just mm-hmm. as much as the talent today. And I can't name everybody. I was just naming a few guys, but you know, the way I go about and we go about our business as a company, it's just different. We know I'm not, I know I'm not going to be able to represent every mm-hmm. player. Every family don't want to hear the truth when you're in a, when, when you're in a, mm-hmm. a, a, a meeting. And at the same time, you know, you still got parents that, believe in the so-called establishment and you still got people that are defined by their business card. I don't I don't carry a business card because mm-hmm. I define a business card. It's a difference, mm-hmm. you know? So oh, let, me, let me tell you my top five, then I got two more questions for you. Okay. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Steph Curry, LeBron, Magic, in that order. That's my top five. Okay. I went by positions, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he went guard, point yeah, guard. Yeah, I, I went by positions. I want to ask you, when the league tried to box and you not out. Not top five, but team. Right, not right, that, right. I don't do the top five thing. When the league tried to box you out, how difficult was that? Because at one time, they tried to change... The Rich Paul rule. The Rich Paul rule, where well, you, had it, to, you had to go to school and this, well, that, and the other. When they tried two, to box you out, break well, that things, down. A couple things happened. So when I first got into business, the first thing, there was an article written on me that tried to basically um, stunt my growth or or stop me from being put in position to even represent players. Mm-hmm. That was done strategically um, coming from a place that I, I, I once was. And they tried to do that, you know, a couple people did. That was one thing that many people skip over and don't even know about. And so I had to go through this whole thing, the NCAA investigated me, all that, found nothing. Um, but the young man lost his eligibility which was bad, it really cost them. But that came from somebody strategically targeting me to try to do that, mm-hmm. number one. And at the time when the article was written, it was like, damn, you got them to write this article about me that you know not true. And so that was, that really pissed me off. And then from there, um, the, the rule from the NCAA about the that became the Rich Paul rule that said agents had to have a college degree to be able to represent people that are testing the water, meaning that I'm not sure if I'm a pro or not, and I want to keep my eligibility. Well, I don't really represent guys that's testing the water anyway, so I really wasn't focused on that. But at the same time, when I thought about it a little bit more, I'm like, damn, this is not even about me per se, because I'm already over the hill Mm -hmm. in terms of, I made on the other side, it's nothing they can really do to me. Mm-hmm. This is about people coming behind me, mm-hmm. right? And so they're trying to stop that. And that's when I wrote the opt-ed. Um, and I think it took six days for them to take it down or whatever it was. Like they totally removed it because that was BS. And, 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 it was clear and, and blatant. They, they know that, yeah. yeah. It was blatant, yeah. Now, now I know books are always you know great first steps, first steps in a journey of healing. So what are you doing to unpack some of the trauma that you experienced throughout your life? Writing this book was very therapeutic for me, man. Okay. I needed that. Okay. I needed that because, you know, as a kid, I bottled so much, and I didn't know anything about talking to a therapist back then. Mm-hmm. You know, the therapist was like the guy with a fifth of rose in his hand. <laughs> He's drunk. You talking Absolutely. to him, you know. Um, but today I'm in a much different space, and that's why I felt it was, you know, kind of like four things. Motivation, the book, um, I think it was important to give people pers- per- perspective mm-hmm. and perception, um, and then to allow people to, to walk with you through your journey and, and, and these experiences because 
there we have shared experiences despite race, gender, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, background, wherever you came from. There's a chapter in this book that you share an experience with me in some shape, form, or fashion, Absolutely. for sure. And for some people, most chapters in this book, you're going to share an experience, an experience with me. So um, the timing of it just felt right. And anything I do is gut and heart, man. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and just like I was um, texting, me and LeBron was texting the other day, and I was like, man, I really want to get the, the artist to do like a self-destruction or all in the same game type mm-hmm. type of song because it's just what's happening today with our youth just just so much careless killing and um you know I lost my uh my little cousin the other day he was 17 years old last Thursday was found you know shot in the drive by like Man, 17 sorry, years old and sorry, I buried yeah, his father in 2009 so yeah. I'm talking to my uncle who's my mother's brother and you know I can I can hear his hurt and my oh. uncle Kevin like is my mother's second youngest brother Great guy, hunt, you know, big farm down in Mississippi, do his thing, and this is his grandson, and but he lost, so now he lost his son and his grandson, mm. and I'm connected to it. Like I'm not, bro. I don't know how many funerals I paid for this year, mm. just yearly. I don't know how mm. many, you know, times I send money to people, books, and I've been doing that for 20 years, so I'm still connected mm-hmm. as it pertains to just people because I understand it. You that know? means nothing's changing either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it means nothing cha- nothing's yeah. changing, man. And and so I, I just think like, I don't knock the music um, in terms of sharing your story, but but it, it, it's just to a point to where we need, we need a different message. And it, that's not to not be cool and not to be relatable and all that. I know the, related, the relatability thing, but it's also relatable to talk, to tell somebody what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why not to do it as well. Mm-hmm. Because that's what we grew up on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like change is cool to cop, but more important is loyalty. Loyal fees. fees you know? Know? That's but how it is now. That's how it always, always be. be. I never change. It's always me. You know, like mm-hmm. I can't expect people to be Jay, and I don't. And I, but at the same time, there's a balance, right? And so, okay. I, but we need that. We need because it, it's just, it's just crazy. That's what's going on. You know, right now, that's it's crazy. not even about no money. You know this, and there's there's a there's a chapter in the book. Remember, I talk about the kid who said, "Well, that's why your mom smoked crack, mm-hmm. right?" Yeah, and and you, I had you learned to, how to you yeah. learned how when you you was a good you used to snap crazy, and then when they would do that, you would get frozen. You yeah. learned how to navigate through that, right? And today, it's hard for kids to do that because social media is observer's paradox. And so, if me and you got into it at school, and we was in the bathroom, but Envy was the only one that seen us. It's over. You know, it's like, well, I won. No, you say you won. Well, Envy only one that's seen us. Maybe he want to comment on it. Maybe he don't. I think us two would have been teasing Envy. I just feel like that. I feel like, <laughs> but, like I feel like he the guy that could be light skin. <laughs> you be yeah. You gotta you gotta relax on Envy, man. With the, with the light skin <laughs> shit. Thank you. Thank I'm you, Rich. With Envy. You Thank you, Rich. Relax Thank you, Rich. I, I, you know, I, I support Envy back in the day when you did you, a lot for us in the in the culture. Like you gotta relax <laughs> on Thank Envy. Thank you, Rich. Please. Thank, Thank you, Rich. But but what I will say is just like. But today, anything you do, if a kid don't get a like, they take the picture down or enough likes, mm-hmm. you know. And then now it's about comments that people are making, and it's causing this retaliation. Right. And there, you 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 losing the kid prior to. So I, I look at it. I'm saying like, you got to be able to get there. Like these kids not even yeah. allowing themselves to get there mm-hmm. to where you know we all did crazy stuff when you're young, mm-hmm. but like who you are today, how you perceive life and you know your family and different things like that, your job. When you look back on some of the things you did when you was young, like, man, that was stupid. Absolutely. That was really stupid. Absolutely. You know, and so, but they're not even getting a chance to look back. They want to do it. Yeah. They they want to, mm-hmm. it's a clout thing and it's and it's a, it's just a weird place right now. Rich gotta go, by the yeah, way. Yeah, last question because I know I'm you gotta good, go. Whatever. Uh East Side of Cleveland. Yeah. 125th in Edmonton. Yeah, St. Clair, you know, St. Cl- 125th in Edmonton is like the to the exact Google map, boom, origin. Mm-hmm. But Glenville community and, and St. Clair is where I'm, is where I'm from. Yeah. How does Adele fare in those environments? <laughs> I took her there. Really? Hell yeah. What? Yeah. What did she say? By the way, it's the funny. You had Adele on the block? Listen, 100%, 100%. And by the way, you know, we pulling up and I got. Security. I got the feds. Cars. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? 
everybody and the Cleveland police, everybody. So I'm pulling up to houses and you know what it looks like when we when we pulling up. Yeah. You know, all black trucks. People probably like the running. president's like, town. They think the pres- <laughs> they think the, no, they think the president's town. <laughs> no, they so, think the feds. No, so, no. yeah. Are they running? Yeah, they so so they're like, man, she, you know, it starts spreading throughout the neighborhood. Like, man, like you, bro, you can't. You gotta give us a heads up or something. You can't be pulling up like <laughs> like that. But no, like we went to the hood, though. So no, for sure. I, you know, like my family is my family, bro. Like, I don't. Yeah. I can't. You know, in the book, when, when you and when you in Cleveland, all we all we saw was Cleveland. So, no matter how far I go in life, I take mm-hmm. Cleveland with me because I couldn't be me without Cleveland, and not just St. Clair, all of Cleveland. You know, mm-hmm. up the way, down the way, cross town. Like, it's it's just this book it, is a love letter to Cleveland. It, it raised me. It really bro. is. It really it, it really raised me, and it's, it'd be hard for me to be who I am with, without the way I I grew up, and I I, I really appreciate. The guys in the Dice House that 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 raised me, you know, mm-hmm. um, all of them, you know, Lil Mo's and Texas and Winks and mm-hmm. and you know, like it, it, it was my uncle Lance, my uncle Warren, you know. How did uh, they embrace Adele, Adele though? How did the hood embrace Adele, Adele when you had her out there? They loved it, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they rock with it. Yeah, that's some legendary shit. Yeah, they rock mm-hmm. with it. Yeah, they look at me. <laughs> they rock with it because because you know, like and and again. That's part of me. It's right, hard right, to right, date right. me, and then I'm not me. Right. That like that'll never happen. I'm not changing for for nobody. I had I had Jay to send the hoods one one day during the tour. This was like '05, mm-hmm. and he came out and where my this guys at? Where this guys at? Where my where my Saint Clair is at? You know what I'm saying? Ain't the same. Jay grew up in Marcy. Like, if, no, no, no. Too. I understand. Are you saying be, you saying the deal? I'm just saying in terms of just me being me. But no, yeah. they they they. They love it. They love it for sure. So you getting married? They embrace it. Life is good, Charlamagne. Why are you back? Cause you've been Life referring is, to you as her husband. Life is very good. Oh, okay. I don't, you know. Why are you all in that man's personal business? I'm just asking questions. Charlamagne's <laughs> always in people's personal business. This is for business. the the, 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 the internet. Like I'm saying, I don't care. I'm just asking questions for the internet. I know everybody's asking questions for the internet. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> life is good. Life is good. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> well, the book is out today. Lucky me. And we appreciate you joining us, brother. No, I appreciate you guys, man. It was it's great. I uh, I'm happy about the book. I'm happy. You know, I'm I'm just in a good space, man. You know, like I, I never get too high or too low about anything, and I don't really sit in my success. So, I'm just just grinding, man. This but, is a fantastic read. Mm-hmm. I think everybody should go out there and get lucky, me. And Thank it was you. funny because everybody remember they was talking about when you were supposed to have a movie about your life. Yeah. And everybody was saying like, why would Rich Paul have a movie about his life? This, this right here why, yeah. will let you know why he needs a movie about his life. But congrats life. to y'all too, man. Like, you know, how long y'all been on now? 13, 13 years. years. About to be 14. 14. Yep. It's crazy. Starting yeah. a lot of shit. You, just a lot of shit started with you, Charlamagne, it saying. Did. I agree. You gotta leave people alone, man. I have. I agree. I don't You've definitely alone. matured. Absolutely. You've gotten better. Yeah. You see a therapist? Absolutely. I started going to therapy in 2016. And that's when it changed. Yep. Cause prior to that, you was we used to, yeah we was menaces and we, me and Rich used to argue about <laughs> stuff like a lot. Of, <laughs> I don't gonna bring no fight in, but we used to have some good conversations. Yeah, yeah. I miss those conversations. We need to do that. I'm with it more often. Absolutely. Now I miss those conversations because I like the debates. It's it's all good. Absolutely. He needs so. a, he needs a light skin therapist. That's what he needs to stay up the light skin brothers, it. man. See. I mean, you know. Rich, I, you was Nino Brown. Cut it out. Nah, stop it. All right. Cut it out. It's Rich Paul. <laughs> you, it's you the Breakfast like the Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.